And, you know, I'm glad you brought up this book. What I want to actually say, because earlier you actually brought up, you said we're doing, I think, quote, God's work, right? Mm. So you happen to know the monks. Well, I'll not try to be a palm, but, you know, it's kind of funny. <laughs> <Whoa>. <laughs> Might trigger somebody who listening. Well, well, let me tell you guys, um, I, I'm Jewish. <laughs> I'm not oh my God, really? My husband's <laughs> yeah. Jewish. So. so there you go. So, and, and my daughter-in-law is Chinese. So, you know, small world yeah. in which we live. Look, I was, I started dog training when dog training was old school. They taught us mm -hmm. how to essentially make the dog do things. Yeah. And of course, they also somewhat paid a little bit of attention to teaching us how to reward or praise the dog when he did it. But the choice that the dog had in 1969, 1970 was very clear. Do this, and I'll say, good boy. Don't do this, and I'm going to yank that leash. <laughs> like, these are your two choices. You pick one. Now, I had, let me, let me, I'll see if I can, let me just show you the picture real quick. Because <laughs> this it. is our other book. And yeah. My first dog in, is, in this, is in this book here. So I'll just, it'll give you an idea, really, of what I'm about. But this is, this is my first dog. Gus and me. Oh, nice. Um, you know, that picture was taken, I think, in 72 in Broomall, Pennsylvania, on my front yard. But, um, you know, that he was a Sheltie and he was a sensitive dog and he was my buddy and I was young. So um, <clears throat> I didn't want to yank him around as much as I did. And so I was, it put me always in mind of looking for something better, right? Yeah. Always, look, always looking for a, a better way. So ultimately, um, it was on my mind to focus a little bit about the relationship. That dog that I just showed you, he taught me a lot of what I know about dog training now. And, and one of the lessons that he taught me was about a little bit about why, a little bit about why. Remember I started by saying mm -hmm. why. I, I really wanted to understand why. I mean, like, I know why I love you, but why do you love me? I know why I train you. I started so you didn't get killed on the road, but why do you seem to enjoy it? Why do you do it? I'm asking you to do things. You don't want to come when called. You don't want to sit straight. You know, among the things that, that, that you, you teach at that level of obedience, and now I rehabilitate dogs more and I train them for obedience, but nonetheless, mm -hmm. in those days, yeah. it was obedience. And what, there is an exercise called stand for examination where you have to tell the dog stand, stay, and you walk six feet away, no leash. And then a stranger comes up, puts their hands on the dog and goes over him like a vet would. Mm -hmm. He hated that. He hated that. He was, a, he was a reserved dog. He was the dog who like, buy me dinner and then we'll talk. About <laughs> if, you, you know, if you touch me or you don't. But I taught him this thing and he had to do this thing. And so I remember as the judges would run their hand over his back, I could see his skin crawl. Mm. He never moved. He never, you know, made a noise. He, he did what he was supposed to do. I could ask him, I could make him do it. I just couldn't make him like it. But he did it for me. And it was a sacrifice because he didn't like it. His skin crawled at the touch of a stranger. Meantime, he's sleeping in my bed. My friends, he would jump into their laps, you, you know. But a stranger touching him, ugh. But he did it because I asked him to. So I was really just utterly fascinated with the, with the why you know, with, with, with the why of all of this. And um, one day I came home, I was probably about 13, I would say, and I had a dog show that we were going to go to on the weekend. And this was midweek. And I don't know why I was late coming home from school, but I remember I was, and I pulled the dog out of the house. I snapped the leash on a collar and I started to train him right away, started to train heel, you know, and doing mm -hmm. all the stuff that we were going to have to do. Cause I was worried we have this thing coming, pressure, this mm -hmm. contest, right? He wouldn't do it. Grace, the dog knew all this stuff. I was just supposed to practice the routine. He was like, not going to do it. Well, I did what I was taught to do. Oh, you don't want to do? Poof, you know, correction. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, now, I was a kid and I loved my dog, so I don't want it to sound <clears throat> abusive. It wasn't abusive, but it was corrective. It was yep. corrective. Like, I'm not going to make any excuse for that. It was corrective. And, um, let me tell you what, it became quickly apparent to me that he was going to let me do whatever I wanted to him with that leash and that choke chain, but he wasn't going to heal. He wasn't going to do it. And it confused me very much because he knew this. He, was, he excelled at it, and I knew that. 
So it was the first time in my life that I, that I stopped the training session in mid session and just stopped. And I stopped because I was confused. Now I didn't know it at the time, but when you get confused or when you get emotional, the best thing you can do is stop, just mm -hmm. stop. It's the simplest thing. You know, even a sentence has a period or a comma to pause. <laughs> and, uh, but I didn't know this at that time, but I did stop. It was very lucky because my brain said something's wrong and I don't know what's wrong. This is unusual. And I'm going to lose my temper if I keep going. So I stopped and I started to think what's different every day. I come home, I play, I train my dog. Every time I come home, I play, I train my, I didn't play. I didn't play. And I remember thinking, I always play with them a little bit and I didn't play with them. Impa, come on. Such a small thing. No way. No way. Maybe. I take the leash off of them. I sit down. I said, come here. And um, he jumped into my lap and I told him I was sorry. And it was the first time also that I had to apologize to a dog. I'm sure I had committed many transgressions before that, but this was the first time that I realized it. And that day he taught me about relationship, humility, apology, and friendship. These are the things that he taught me in that little thing. Because his thinking was, you could kill me, but I do this because I love you, not because I'm afraid of you. And um, boy, what a powerful lesson that was because and after 10 minutes, I stood up, put the leash back on. Let's do this. He's like, yep, let's do it. And hey, he was excellent. And that weekend, he won high in trial, which is like, you know, the, the big prize. I still, I still, you know, I, I still have the silver trophy from that downstairs in this house. And so what has that got to do with the monks? Several years later, a book came out called How to Be Your Dog's Best Friend. I have it on the bookshelf behind me. <clears throat> It's, it's, it's over. It's that one <laughs> on the corner. Okay. That book came out and that book is called how to be your dog's best friend. And it had two sort of pieces of information in there that were really fleshed out. The, the second part was how to heal, sit down, stay calm, how to train. The first half is why to train. Because training builds a relationship and serves a relationship. And that training and relationship go hand in hand. And when I read that, it rocked me because it was different than anything that had been done before. Today, everybody, oh, the monks, everybody loves the monks. Guys, they were revolutionary. They were revolutionary. Because what they said was training is meant to serve the relationship. It's not just about, you know, he'll sit down, stay calm, and making your dog do stuff because you need to do that. It was a why, what, why, what's in it for the dog and how do we bring the dog's point of view into the relationship to create uh, a deeper bond. And so that completely fascinated me. And, um, you know, for a kid who had read hundreds of dog books that they were like my rock star, you know, I, <laughs> they were my rolling stones. And then I grew up and met them. <laughs> so, you know, that's another whole story, but that's what happened. I grew up and met them. And um, I should probably let you say something, Grace. It's your show. 